assalamu alaikum students uh, welcome today we have got a guest lecturer he is uh, dr anil salman he is the hod of department of management sciences and he is going to talk about entrepreneurship and the youth sir welcome assalamu alaikum okay. i'll be teaching you about uh, the main crux of today's lecture is that why uh, scientists are becoming entrepreneurs do you know any scientist who have whom you think that is an entrepreneur scientist all, all of you are bioscience students right so do scientists turn to entrepreneurs yes. and who is there sorry beta i am asking do you know any scientist who has become an entrepreneur do you want to become an entrepreneur yes. Yes. <laughs> and why? To earn money. <laughs> to earn money. And to get known for your work. To get known for your work. To so to make a legacy. So entrepreneurs make legacy. Entrepreneurs earn money. And entrepreneurs get known for their. Get known for their. So while you are becoming an academic or while you are becoming just a scientist, these three things are not possible. These are, but not that important. Either. Okay. Now let's see what's happening. Right now, if you look at the global co composition, or if you look at the composition uh, within Pakistan also, the major chunk of people who are in the workforce or who are the potential workforce people are the youth. Okay, and in youth, we have two kinds of genders: one is your male, and another one is your female. And what is the composition of females? They are used to be, but now it's 48 percent, right? But if you would see that uh, there are more number of women at the moment in the universities in the science subjects as compared to male, and we see the very pronounced proof in this class also: two males, rest of all, all you are females. So the current unemployment rate that is going on in Pakistan is uh, what? What is the unemployment rate in Pakistan? So I'm asking about what the economic survey talks. So better don't come from the from the, go from there. So what is that? It's about 5.2 percent is the unemployment rate within Pakistan. Now that unemployment rate is not just for uh, this uh, male, but it is just both the male and the female. Now usually, uh, one of my friends he was a venture capitalist. Do you know who's a venture capitalist? a person who has the money and who is going to sponsor your ideas so one of the venture capitalists uh, was looking out for potential entrepreneurs and he was asking one simple question to all these young entrepreneurs who had excellent ideas and that one question was what is 2 plus 2 and it is an excellent easy answer for all the scientists and that is for anyone who is different with that answer why how come how come the uh, maths logic uh, prepares you for that it doesn't so what is the answer for 2 plus 2 4 and all of you mashallah are rejected none of you can become an entrepreneur because 2 plus 2 is never equal to 4 because we are talking about business now this is basically called the synergistic effect. Whenever you are combining the inputs, does it equal your output? No, no. no it doesn't. What happens to the output? It can be minimum or... It is always more than your input. Right? This is what the business teaches us. You invest 10 rupees and what you should get? More than that. More than that. And if you are getting 9 rupees out of it, is that a good investment? No. No. A Would a venture capitalist hire you? No. No. So what is 2 plus 2? 5. 5. 6. 6. 22. 100. <laughs> or what is an answer if you really want to win that venture capitalist heart? What is the get up? Infinity. Infinity or anything that you want. Anything that you want. <laughs> right if I want 100 you have that capacity to make 100 if I want 1000 you can do that 1000 you tell me and I'll make it happen because that person will not say that okay I want 2 plus 2 equal to 
4. It is always more than 4. That is called the synergy. That's called the synergistic effect. Another important characteristic, and as I asked you that, okay, why scientists want to become an entrepreneur, that is basically the second question after what is 2 plus 2 I'm asking. What are the two most powerful words in the world? Hello and thank you. Guess work. You may be, you are always wrong. Right or wrong? Thank you. Profit and loss. Peace. Please. Motivation and hard work. Motivation, hard work. The boys, the minority. Profit and loss. I love you. It is three. <laughs> And that's why you are always rejected. <laughs> because usually when I ask this question to a six-year-old students, they say, I love you because they love their mom. <laughs> right? But what are the two most powerful words? That is, I am. I am. Do you feel the gravity of these words? Can you speak a bit louder? No, these two. <laughs> Louder. I am. Everyone. I am. Now speak this. Am I? Which has a stronger word? I am. I am. Why? Because it shows that you are good enough. How much do you want? You have right? You have the confidence. You have the potential. And if you are in doubt, that brings you to am I. Am I. And throughout our life in the Pakistani context, in the entrepreneurial system, what are we doing that we try these words because whatever idea you will come up with you will always tell your family you will always share it with your friends and what is the first thing that they will do are you uh, doubt you. they will doubt you and you start thinking am i but why entrepreneurs like mark zuckerberg why entrepreneurs like uh, steve jobs why entrepreneurs like uh, in pakistan sayed babar ali what they believed was i am because you can do it. So that is the first motivation that either you are a scientist, either you are an uh, economist, either you are an academic. The first thing and the foremost thing is that first you have to realize that, okay, I can make anything because I am. Now, you see that markets are real and markets are ruthless. The first thing is that we stay in that utopia in these four years of education that wow I am getting four out of four GPA I am going to become a very good theta but the moment you get into the market what happens? You become zero. You become zero. That just eliminates and you become zero because you don't know what the market is going to treat you. Because once you are outside the gate of a university, you are not the only Kamsian. There are so many other graduates who are in the market and who may have much better ideas as compared to you. And there you realize that the markets are real. And number two, the markets are ruthless because they don't care about how good you are they don't care about what kind of ideas you have they don't care about how emotional you are they don't care about uh, how uh, good GPS you had because they mean business if you are beneficial for me yes they will accept you but if you are not giving me profit they will reject you right so now what is happening that the time is changing and what is happening at this time that scientists are turning into entrepreneurs. S&T, science and technology, research budgets are increasing day by day. We have higher education commission and they are giving you all these increasing to do research and to commercialize that research and you should solve the commercial problems what problems industry has if you have an academic or if you have a very nice theoretical problem markets are not going to buy it you have to see that where is the pain in the society and if you are able to solve that pain you become an entrepreneur otherwise you will always remain an employee so 
the research output now if you uh, see that in Pakistan we have crossed the highest research in globally and we have the highest research output but do we see the benefit no. where do we see the benefit how many patents we have registered very few how and what happens in US the moment student graduates with his research he uh, in one uh, semester he just tries to get the patent on that research do are we trained to how to get the patent what are copyrights how we can protect our scientific research and how we can commercialize that research that is not being taught and by the time we have an excellent idea when we go to the market what happens someone hijacks your idea because they know how to do that thing so Scientists need to have that kind of vibe, they need to have that kind of outlook in terms of learning that how entrepreneurship works. One, uh, once I was in France and I was uh, teaching one of the classes and the answer that I got that okay who is an entrepreneur and they said the unanimous answer was they take risk. Do entrepreneurs take risk? Yes. Yes. Wrong. They take very calculated risk. They have a very and if they know that they are going to fail in that venture will they go for that no no so they don't take risk <laughs> right a risk is a person who is not rational but entrepreneurs are very rational they know what they are doing what kind of investment they are making and if that two plus two is going to give them four they will never go for it but uh, we have this common generic understanding oh he's a risk taker no he is very calculated he has uh, there are two types of people the ki the kind of entrepreneurs which we usually encounter who have lots of ideas they actually play ludo and the good entrepreneurs who are long run they play chess so that's your choice what kind of game you want to play right so what is happening is that once some of these academics become millionaires and ride Porsches the wives of others needle them to go into that direction and that's what is happening that once you become an entrepreneur then people will start nudging you oh you need to do like him or you need to do like her because they are earning money uh, I'll give you another example you see a bureaucrat a person who has just taken a civil service CSS exam and uh, he ja he enters into this group of uh, DMG Pakistan administrative services and once he graduated from the uh, Walton uh, Civil Services Academy you see that he is riding a Porsche yeah. what is the first impression that we get about him Wow! wow. wow? <laughs> seriously <laughs> rich he's a government officer 17th grade and he's riding a Porsche what is the first impression we think about him Crap. huh Swag? Nah. <laughs> what else? Corrupt. He is corrupt. Yeah. Right? And now you see that there is one student who has just graduated from IBA Karachi and he is now working in Shlum. He had five, six patents and he is riding a Porsche. What is the first impression that we get? He is successful. He is a millionaire. Now you should say, wow. <laughs> right why because for entrepreneurs when they have this loads of Porsche and money no one will doubt it when a government servant has that Porsche you will always doubt it so entrepreneurs have license to a good lifestyle government officers don't have that so that is another dimension that I always see in the entrepreneurs that they have license to lifestyle, lifestyle. then he becomes entrepreneur he become if he is doing a business he's an entrepreneur and if he's not doing a business he's an employee legitimacy counts with the ethics right and ethics varies from person to person if I have one ballpoint and I give that to you and you take it out of the classroom who are you you're a thief <laughs> right yes. if I keep 10,000 rupee over here and then you take it away who are you <laughs> still you are a thief what qualifies you but that was just one ballpoint yes. and maybe the one you are using you may have picked it from somewhere you may not have bought it should I call you a thief <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
right? It's the perspective how you are looking because ethics vary from people to. Now, if you are taking that ballpoint and then you give it to some poor child who has no pencil to write, should I still call you a thief? Now you are Robin Hood, yes. right? So, it's a perspective how you are looking at the things, right? So, morals and ethics varies from person to person. It is your choice that whether I will, uh, people get government cars, they use it to send their kids to school. Ethically right? No. no, no. But no. some would say that, okay, I earned that position and I, that's why I'm enjoying it. The government has given me that privilege. Some don't, some do. So that is again, vary from person to person what he or she thinks about the job that they are doing. Okay? Even in the business, tax evasion. For some things, some people would say, well, I am evading tax because I'm doing so much CSR, corporate social responsibility. I'm giving it to the poor. So that makes legitimate that I can do the tax evasion. Some would say, no, I don't. So it is a relative term when we start talking about the ethics or morality. Now, so you see the doctors now turning into the bioscientists now turning into entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. What and how? The first thing. There is faculty entrepreneurship. Because if you go to the market and you start saying that, well, I want to become an entrepreneur, will people listen to you? No. Not really. Because they would say, where is the credibility? How we will trust you? But if you attach yourself to a faculty member who is now doing some commercial research, that gives you an edge how to become an entrepreneur. So the good idea is that you start becoming faculty entrepreneurship. Just across the road we have this incubation center where the ideas, they have their practicality, they can be turned into entrepreneurship. Number two, connecting with the VCs. And VC stands for? Vice Chancellor. Vice Chancellor. Shabash, we are reading entrepreneurship and we are talking about university. <laughs> this is venture capitalist. So VCs are the venture capitalists. And who are the venture capitalists? Who was asking the question, what is 2 plus 2? Who sponsors your research? If you have seen the, um, uh, the movie Facebook, uh, what was the name of the movie? Social Network. Social Network. That guy in Chicago, he was the venture capitalist who actually knows that, okay, if I put in money, I am going to multiply by money. So, you should need to connect with the venture capitalist. How many of you know that in your area of research, who are your venture capitalists? None. So start looking for it. That who can actually like my idea and who can sponsor my research. Number three, sabbaticals and startups. So what faculty, what usually scientists do because they are doing jobs, they take sabbaticals and sabbaticals are the leaves they take from the university or the research centers and what they do is they start working up for their startups. startups. What is a startup? A new business? Starting from the initial Because it has not matured. So what you do is you start working on it and incubators are a good place where we can start uh, our startups. Right? Then the last and the final one. How to do it. For every scientist it is very crucial that we need to know how to protect our research. How to make our idea foolproof. How we can stop people from imitating our research and that is basically file your patent. So for a scientist it is really important that you should know that okay I need to file my patent. Then what you do? Take equity. You have to share that money, you have to bring your uh, risk. Now what is the risk that you are investing your money into it? When Jeff Bezos, the uh, entrepreneur of Amazon when he started he failed five times so there is always a risk of failure but if there's a risk of failure does it mean we should not do it no no or we should we should always try to do it but it should not rather make us uh, depressed it should not rather make us frustrate that we should not be going for those ideas then you should set up the incubators. Incubators are not the, uh, they are very good for the startups. You take your company, you take your idea, you are uh, like in GIK there's an incubator, in Comsats we have incubator, in NUST we have incubator and you start your company and once it's sustainable then you take off. Then we have 
PhD thesis or the MS thesis, what you do? They have the potential intellectual property right. So because whenever you are doing your research, have you ever thought that does it have a commercial value? It's not about proving that, uh, uh, that these genes are going to do this or do that, but always do your research with a perspective that whether your research has a commercial value. Can you have an intellectual property right on your research? Is it solving any commercial problem or not? Why MBAs from good business schools, I'm talking about Harvard, MIT, what they do is they do go to companies, they ask them that, okay, what's your problem? And the moment companies tell them, they solve their problem. And when they solve the problem, companies hire them. So why can't a PhD or an MS person who is doing his research can solve a problem in the society? And if they can, we can always apply an intellectual property right. Then it's always that mostly uh, in the sciences what we do is after MS, after PhD, you would see most of our careers end up teaching. teaching. And what is teaching? teaching. Boring. <laughs> Repeating the same thing for generations. Even when his daughter is studying entrepreneurship, I'll be teaching the same thing. So same thing <laughs> all the time. So it is the reinventing the same wheel so reduce your teaching and go into the venture where you can solve the problems what is happening nowadays when we are talking about the scientists are turning into entrepreneurs the first thing is climate change uh, cultural change in the institutions climate change is happening by the way <laughs> so what is the cultural change what is the what do you think what are the cultural changes that are happening now sorry that is a cultural change? Yes, sir. How? How do you change your culture? Hmm. That is not a cultural change in the institutions. The cultural change can be there is a diversity of uh, like programs being offered. No. What is the culture of Kamsa? Uh, Chalaya, okay. <laughs> Very boring culture. Yes. What do you think? What culture has changed recently? The diversity. What uh, kind of diversity? How many? Is there any foreign student over here? No. no. Tell me, what is the cu culture of bioscience? If you are talking to me like uh, two decades ago, and if I'm uh, talking to uh, scientists, everyone was enthusiastic in terms of building their career in science, looking out for good inventions. But now if you are going to these good universities where science culture is now, they are commercializing their research. Now they really want to become entrepreneurs. That is the change of culture. Females coming to universities, that was not the same ratio about 30, 40 years back. Now women are their participation in the workforce is more. more. That is a cultural change. Right? So, the, in the, even in the institutions, the culture is changing. Uh, in Karachi, when the first time a woman was hired in a corporate organization, what change that brought? She can be. Huh? No. Very basic thing. And it was a complete change of infrastructure in the organization. The new toilet. <laughs> Why not? Right? And when you go for SA 8000, the social accountability 8000, and when we are looking into, when we go to any organization, and we, when we start looking at the token, when they're talking about women empowerment, equal opportunity employers, what is the best litmus test? You see, okay, is there a separate washroom? Right? So th those are the changes that were earlier not accepted, but now they are very much part of it. You would see cultural change that there are places where they are making the ramps where people with special needs can also come to there. So there are, uh, if you go to Barrier Town, over there, there is, uh, what is that pizza place? The Thin Crust, Chai Hana. Pizza original, and you will see there's a ramp over there. That's for the special need people. 
that is a cultural change that now you expect that people who are on the wheelchair they can also come to the shops they have also equal right for this but that was very years ago that was realized by the west and now in pakistan we are also realizing that factor so number 3 as I, I already talked about research with an application lens whatever research you are doing it's not just for the sake of time guzaro it's basically whether it is applied or not whether it is solving any problem or not and I'm not talking about when I'm saying solving the problem means change the world no it can be a small innovation and what is the new word that we are talking about innovation No. Minovation. M I double N O V A T I O N. Minovation is the new concept that comes that okay, now that age has gone, that okay, you have to bring some remarkable groundbreaking research or the innovation. Now you just twist and turn, twerk a little bit of the existing pattern and you minovate. Because minovation is easy. Right? In Pakistan, if you can see that the cinema culture is back, that's why Pakistani movies are becoming more and more in production, in popular, and people, family people are going to the cinemas, and there was one time, I'm talking about 1990s, there was a time when people with families would never go to the cinemas, because that was being considered that it's a lower class, it's a Tangawala class who is going to these kind of movies, and that is mostly male-dominated cinemas. But what happened? Why Cineplex, why the, these new cinemas came, and the again culture, even though the price of the ticket is high, it's 600, 800 rupees, and people are watching movies. Why? So because there are money, as the Pakistani people, they prefer People watch. always have money. Ha, huh, but why? Because the culture, the cinema culture never finished. But the class of people now coming to cinemas that has changed. Cinema it's pretty cinema. Cinemas are Instagram. Cinemas are never pretty, girls are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you have to use the right word. <laughs> cinemas are <laughs> family oriented now. Yeah. It's the same thing. Coffee culture in Pakistan. When I say Liaquat Ali Khan, which name comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Prime Minister? Nahi. The person who started the coffee culture in Pakistan, Prime Minister, his name was also Liaquat Ali Khan, but Liaquat Ali Khan was an IBA Karachi graduate. He went to Australia and he brought Gloria Jeans. Wow. <laughs> See? So, the culture of coffee. We were all Dood Pati or uh, tea. Chaya nation and now that now the new uh, common thing that is coming Koita cafe yeah. heard in Islamabad law every sector has a popularity just tell me from where Balochi people used to have the parathas <laughs> right innovation the idea and automatically now the perception has been developed that if you want to have tea if you want to have paratha no second place other than the Koita cafe so there has to be an application in your research then the relationship of student and professor earlier was just academic but now it has to be a partnership it's not that professor is always giving professor is always learning from the student so that partnership needs to be why don't you start a company because you are solving the problem right then you need to have sponsored or collaborative research join into the projects there are so many independent student calls where students can write their projects and they can submit it and they can get the grants out of it and the last one is you need to take some risk and when I talk about risk it's about that you need to believe in two words that is I am, I am. it's not about that okay you jump into that I tell you that okay a uh, common test is that when you were young, so your mother would say, Beta, don't touch it, it's hot. And what we used to do? We will always touch it because we were dumb. <laughs> it's hot. Someone is telling you it's hot, why are you touching it? This is not the risk taker that I am talking about. Okay? Speed kills. Why we always go for a higher speed? Huh? Yeah, but why you are doing it? Because the moment it just 
gets into some other car, then you say, oh, I made a mistake. And next time you always draw, drive below 40. So why you had to do it when you knew that, okay, driving fast is? Smoking kills. But why you smoke? I don't smoke. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> why we smoke? What is the reason? Huh? Yeah, it's cool. It gives you a Marlboro look. It gives you rough and tough. It may it gives you a more manly look. manly look, right? But it doesn't. When you get a heart attack, <laughs> everything is gone, right? Okay. So, for academics, for scientists, the most important thing that we have been talking about is publishing impact factor journals. But no, in the present era, we say that you need to have impact. impact. Act. Act is more important that you have to put your research into action. Anyone know this gentleman? Galileo, it's written over there, otherwise he must not have been known to you. Right? You knew him? You read it. Okay. So, what if I Galileo is famous? He invented the telescope and he was a scientist just like you people. Are you scientists? In, uh, process. Kind of, right? In the nascent stage, yes. So Galileo was a scientist, but I say Galileo was an entrepreneur. Right? Wrong? Right. right. Why? <laughs> Please enlighten me. Uh, sir, because he was the first one to make the telescope. And so? The telescope was commercialized. So? So, you saw Galileo in Porsche? <laughs> <laughs> so he's not an art. Huh? But which car he was riding? Sir, it was huh? expensive at that era. The boy said something. Okay. <laughs> now what, why I call Galileo, there was very interesting that uh, they were going for war and Galileo developed one telescope, one small telescope. And uh, while developing the telescope, what he did was he sold that telescope for a very petty amount that every ship installed it. And every business guy would say, Galileo, you are dumb. Why? You are, you made such a cool invention that it can see the ship for such a far distance, but still you are selling it at such a cheaper price. And Galileo laughed away. And what he said? He can make more. No. The iris the army can have access No. He wanted to help. He said, I am going to sell the manual at a very high price. <laughs> how to use it right so what Galileo did he said well they have installed all these uh, telescopes but they don't know how to use it and when I'm going to sell the user manual it will be very high price that's why a very good scientist but an excellent entrepreneur right so smart risk-taking money-making entrepreneur so what is the recipe for scientists to turn into entrepreneurs? The first checklist. So you have to stay in your comfort zone. Very wrong. You have to get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Until and unless you are in your comfort zone, you will always be thinking average. You always be thinking with bounded rationality. But the moment you are out of your comfort zone, then you start thinking big, out of the box. Okay? So start getting out of your comfort zone. Number two, you have to take risks. Which kind of risks? Calculated risk, with which you know that, okay, I can do it. I am. Then, what do you have to do? Networking on your relationships with other people, media, social media. Media. So what you need to be to become an entrepreneur? So you should have strong social media. How? Uh, so with other entrepreneurs. That's it? Yeah. 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 How? Yeah. That's it? No. So with people with social media. Social media, what you will do? Adding friends daily? <laughs> you become an entrepreneur? Huh? How? I'm talking about networking. A very common thing and a very subtle thing which none of you, especially the scientists, don't apply is this don't smile. <laughs> because when you smile, what you do? 
You make people happy. No, oh. you become approachable. <laughs> people can approach you, but what is the face of a scientist? <laughs> you don't like to talk to them. They hate the world. They want to burn the world. Right? They are so frustrated. Bus. Once I'm done with the degree, I'll get married. <laughs> Nothing else. So what happens is, as McDonald says, smile because it costs nothing. nothing. So start working on your smile. smile. I am not talking about the Facebook connections. Even if you have 4,999 friends, that will not help you becoming an entrepreneur. Okay. So your network skills have to be good. And by network skills, I mean that you have to be radioactive. You have to be viral. You have to be interactive that if you pass by with someone what I should do I should always look back to you again. remember you <laughs> why should I be looking back to you <laughs> okay <laughs> number three what does that talk about <laughs> you have to be calculative you should know that what is your you are playing the chess you should know what is your move when you are talking about your strategy. You should know, uh, there's a very common question that I ask in the interview that how do you see yourself after five years, right? And you need to be sure that, okay, I want to become the regional manager. I would be the vice president. I'll be running my company. I'll be the CEO. Clear cut idea what I really want to be. You have to think big. Think big means don't think impossible that okay I want to be Angelina Julie or I want to be Brad Pitt. <laughs> you will never be. So think practical which is good. Uh, like I once talked to uh, an interview and the guy said I would be the famous personality as you said. And I said how come? I don't know but I will. And he was never famous even today he has only 200 friends in his Facebook. <laughs> okay. So what to be done what are the things to be done by the uh, by these scientists turning into entrepreneurs number one the first and the foremost thing when you are identifying or when you are trying to become an entrepreneur is that you have to see that is there a market market is necessary because if there is no market what we should do we shouldn't go for it exactly if there's no market you create one Steve Jobs, when he started with iPhone, were there phones in the market? Yes, there were. There were phones in the market, but no one talked about iPhone or the touch screen technology. And do you know how he came with this idea of touch screen? He was at Stanford University and while well, as you take the courses, registering the courses, he got late with the registering of courses and he had to complete his credit hours. So the only course that was left was a Braille course. How to study Braille. What blind people do. And how blind people read? By touching. By touching. And once he got that idea, he took that course from there he got that notion that okay I need to make a phone where there's a human interface with the machine and he made that touch screen. otherwise Blackberry Nokia they were ruling the market shares but when he came phones were already there but he actually created the market so the question is is there a market and if there is no market what we do we create a market right it is the same thing, anyone who is insured over here. Insurance. insurance. Have you bought, purchased life insurance? No. So we can kill you. <laughs> so, no insurance. And I will uh, force you at least have one meeting with an insurance agent. And if you say that, okay, I would like to buy an insurance and this chap who will come, who want to sell is the insurance policy, he will be hardly, not an MBA, he will be an undergrad, a BA graduate and the way he will talk, you will feel that you are dying in five days <laughs> and you need an insurance. <laughs> That's, he is creating a market. He would say, ma'am, da, 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 and this is after 10 years, by the time you will do your PhD, you will be getting 40 million dollars and you will say okay let's go for it similar is the case with the credit cards anyone using credit cards one that's it so when you are using a credit card 
meet this person and the way he will pitch an idea you would feel that okay I need a credit card to help my parents <laughs> this is his last tagline that okay what if something happens to your parents you don't have money what will you do and with this plastic money you can actually save their life and you start realizing the importance what he is doing there is no market but in this class there is no market what he is doing he is creating a market number two the first thing that is there a market if not you create a market the second thing do you have the solution to the market need if you don't have a solution you are the way you're wasting the time so you need to go to the market if you have the solution and if you have the solution does anyone else have the solution because if you say that okay I don't need an insurance what other solution you have actually I got this uh, jazz one and they have already given me a micro insurance that's why I don't need state life insurance the market already have alternative right the third one can we make some serious money here sometimes there is market there is a solution there is no other solution but you are earning very less but why we wanted to become an entrepreneur right how much <laughs> How much? <laughs> How much? <laughs> Infinite? Okay. So you need to know how much do you want because venture capitalists will ask you how much money do you need? You can't say. You tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number la Then you are looking into do you have a team? that it takes to the market remember the culture of having one entrepreneur is gone now people work in teams Facebook is not just Mark Zuckerberg it's a team Rosie.pk is not just one person it's a team YouTube was not just one person it's a team but now people work in diverse teams because you may be good in science but you may not be good in marketing so you need a person who is good in marketing a marketing person might be good and how do we define marketing By convincing people convincing people building relationship, building relationship. Social checking mobile no marketing commercializing no idea, no idea. Commercializing. commercializing selling sand to muhammad bin salman <laughs> That is marketing. Yes. Yes. If you can sell sand to Muhammad bin Salman, that's marketing. That's marketing. Because in Saudi, what is the biggest thing that they have? Sand. sand. Only sand. And if a Pakistani entrepreneur can sell sand to Arabs, he is a marketer. Okay. So you may be a very good marketer, but you are a very bad in finance. <laughs> so you now you need a person who is good in finance. So it's not just one person; it's people working in diverse teams. Then. What you uh, usually, uh, Jawad Sahib will also be teaching you that you have to make a business plan. And when you make a business plan, it covers from seed to smoke. <laughs> from seed to, it's a full-fledged business plan that how the idea has generated and how it is actually going to be commercialized. So there we are going to talk about that how you, do you have a business plan whenever you are going for formal presentations. Have you seen the season Shark Tank? Not they, they Not they will? Okay. Get that, download that season, start watching it and you will see that people come present their ideas and the group of venture capitalists are sitting and they are going to tell you that how thrash your idea is. They will completely rip it off and a person who stands in front of them and he owns that idea and he would say, well I am good in my idea and I can make it commercial, commercially viable, I can make profit, how much? <laughs> Infinite profit out of it. Now that would be the trick. So, do watch that uh, season. So, you need to have a credible, a trustworthy business plan. Then, that's what I always ask. That okay, when you are talking to someone, they will ask you, how much money do you need? How much does it cost? So, you need a finance guy or you need a person who can tell you that what is the total cost of that plan, uh, of your venture. Then, is this something you really want to do? Sometimes, most of the time, people become accidental entrepreneurs they were not thinking people liked it and there 
and after some time their heart is full sell it off do something else do something else so you have to be careful or you have to realize that is this really you wanted to do because remember yes you will be riding a Porsche but you will be having sleepless nights you will be having uh, you have to give your time the, f the time that you are giving to your family you have to give it to your business so it is painstaking it's not something you have to sacrifice your money but your employee he has no risk if you fail or if you win because he will be getting his monthly salary right so that's your choice do you really want to do it and the last one is that a right time so what is a good time to become an entrepreneur when you are ready and when a Okay, so if you were 12 years old and you had planned and you had cash? No. Sir, you had training? Sir, I don't have any employer or something like that. Assumption, you have the money. Please, it can be from 25 to 40. There's no age for that. <laughs> right? But that's the best time. When that is the best time. But, again, if you fulfill all the checklist, there's nothing with the age. When you see people like, uh, on whose name that uh, software park, Arfa Park, at what age she became the micro, the youngest Microsoft certified? Was that an age? No. People who are at the age of 30, they are doing it, but she is doing it there. We have the, uh, now in Pakistan, we have people who are under 20 who are in the Forbes list for the entrepreneurs. So age has nothing to do. Age is just a number. But do you have that kind of checklist? Can you really do it? Burning brownie, have you heard about it? Yes. Have you eaten it? Yes. Good? Very good. Who is he? Entrepreneur. From where he started? I don't know. Uh, you don't care? <laughs> if you are learning entrepreneur, you should. <laughs> okay? So whenever, so whatever is given to eat, you eat it without reading what it is. <laughs> so what we do is that this person used to sell these brownies at F8 Shell petrol pump. From there he started and now he is in uh, this Beverly Center, he is in F11 and he started opening. So you always start small. You can't say that, okay, in the first month I am going to make millions and billions. Have you heard the company name Patari? Yes. Yes. What is it? Music. The music, online music. He was my student, Hamayo, from Ajikian. And he started from his hostel room and now he is minting millions. He is covered internationally, the youngest entrepreneur. So age has nothing to do with it. People who are engineers, they take consultancies in their university times and they are making more money as compared to their professors. So it's age has nothing to do with it. Yes, you need to be sensible. You are not supposed to drive fast when you know it will take your life. Right? So words to live by so these are the promises that an entrepreneur always go for number one understand the market and where your technology fits if you do not understand the market what was the first slide markets are ruthless they will kick you out right number two you should be willing to invest money right number three talk to people who have done this before and build the support network not the Facebook, but people who understand it. Because once you are in the market, they will be preaching your word that, okay, this boy has come, this girl has come, she has an excellent research, let's go for it. Because your uh, research will travel, your idea will travel from one place to another at a very fast pace. Then, surround yourself with excellent people that you trust. If you have bad people around, you will have bad ideas. If you have excellent people, you have excellent. And it is proven. When you are sitting in company of bad students, your grades start falling down. If you are studying with uh, hard-working students, you also become theta. <laughs> so, don't overlook students when setting up business teams. So, students are need to be involved the younger one, even your juniors, because they are willing to work for longer hours than they trust you. So, why today, in, as we talk about in 2019, we are saying entrepreneurship is such a big deal. GIK started its business program in entrepreneurship. LAM started it. IBA started it. All business schools and top engineering schools are actually forcing people that, okay, we don't want you to be good employees. We want to become employees 
we want to make you employers why they are saying that why it's such a big deal you talk about uh, if you look at the PM's speech 50% of the time he is trying we have to eliminate we have to reduce the unemployment and I want to have business community I want to involve private sector BOI the minister is talking about the to bring investment and you have to create entrepreneurship in every policy speech it is around every government's agenda so why because most of the uh, people think that entrepreneurship is easy. Seems like that when everyone is saying, oh, why don't you start your own business? So, but sometimes we have these misconceptions and these are the detailed studies that, okay, when we talk about how entrepreneurs come upon, they say entrepreneurs are only the first born. True? No, it's just a myth that only the firstborn can be entrepreneur. This is usually by stories that, okay, I was the firstborn, my father died, that's why I became an entrepreneur. No, everyone can become an entrepreneur. Number two, people who belong to entrepreneurial family, they become entrepreneurs. True? No, not really. Again, it's a fallacy. It's not necessary that a person who was uh, born in an entrepreneur family is going to become an entrepreneur. People... Uh, working in the government they leave their jobs and they become entrepreneurs so again that is a fallacy the third one a very uh, misconception that okay every entrepreneur or every aspiring entrepreneur tell me have you seen Bill Gates he dropped from the school <laughs> and Bill Gates say well I raised a company but I never hired dropouts <laughs> I always have people who are good who are graduated so in any of his convocation speeches you would see Bill Gates always say that okay we only complete your education that is important college dropouts does not mean that you have to become an entrepreneur people with good academic careers people with good academic education they become under Jack Ma who is he, so he uh, Alibaba's Alibaba's he completed his education even though he applied Harvard for like five six times he was always rejected but he's completed his education and then became an entrepreneur so education is important so uh, there is also one very weird belief that people who have a very weird relationship with their father they become entrepreneurs true no no right again that is a fallacy so why entrepreneurship is important now we are talking about well scientists need to become entrepreneurs but what we are talking about that if there is more entrepreneurship there is going to be more employment we create employment we are not employees but we create employment number two there is always a breeding ground for innovation Facebook is it the same Facebook that was launched in 2005 it has changed WhatsApp same thing now you can use it on your computer right WhatsApp web so they are constantly uh, innovating so innovation is constant in entrepreneurship number three there is always a growth number five number four there is local and regional development Khadi yeah. do you know yeah. Khadi what is it don't you don't know good store. it is a clothing store so both genders but it started a small company in Karachi now it is a international brand you would see Khadi outlet in UK in Dubai same with J dot Junaid Jamshed started small became everything so there is always local and regional development then there is equalization of opportunities Procter and Gamble, Unilever, Reckitt Ben Kieser can't hire all the graduates some people need to create jobs they have to become entrepreneurs you start with a small company and then you start multiplying and the last one is economic power dissemination that you have the power then someone else gets the idea it starts multiplying so it's an economic dissemination so entrepreneurship is a very strong component in the economic ecosystem of your country what is this new generation in which we are not me but you people out there what kind of entrepreneurs we are talking about you are talking about number one they belong to middle, middle class. class family not multi-millionaire people but their middle class family why are we are talking about middle class because they have this drive for change because a rich person always have everything so 
that is a middle class families number two they are mostly university. university graduates you won't see people who are having gray hair they are becoming entrepreneurs it's the young people in Pakistan now who are turning into entrepreneurs number three we are talking about they are working in teams. teams they are not one single person who is doing it they are always collaborate and they always collaborate with students and last one they start at a young, young age they don't wait okay I have to be 35 or I have to wait for my ID card once it comes then I'll become an entrepreneur no it has not but they start at a younger age to become an entrepreneur so in this uh, what are the five major initial motivations and that was the first question when I asked you why you really want to become an entrepreneur so what people say the number one they want to achieve self-realization and this self-realization is very important because in this generation that I'm talking about when I was at your age I was a not as smart as you people are right I was old I was dumb my gray cells used to work very slow but you are a generation of digital right what things have to be done in minutes you prefer doing it in seconds so this generation is far most superior I am a lower version you are a higher version of the digital generation so what happens that you need to have a very strong strong realization and strong realization is basically you want to identify yourself as an independent you don't like to be called that I am daughter of this person you would say I am Kossar, uh, I am Batul whatever so then the challenging thing is that you want to this generation of entrepreneurs want to put knowledge into practice the third one is you already said uh, we want to become rich how much infinity rich <laughs> then we want to become their own boss and when I ask in the Pakistani universities why do you want to become the, your own boss do you know what answer I get because they want to get up you want to work no, late somewhere. Uh, we want to sleep <laughs> we want to sleep at our own time okay and last one yes this society is more uh, caring towards social work so they care about society so these are the five reasons which in this dynamic generation of entrepreneurs so <coughs> what will happen when we are promoting entrepreneurship number one you will be not more employees but we are talking about more employers then employees who better understand business so you understand your business it's not that you have to hire other people to make your business understand then you are more innovative and socially responsible then more jobs and you are better informed consumers like you have everything on your iPhones you have everything in terms of apps whatever you want to do it is done you are an informed citizen so there has been major uh, entrepreneurs what you were talking about which age so when we are talking about you see at the age of 15 people are becoming entrepreneurs so people from 15 to 19 they are called the free entrepreneurs anyone in this age over here we are past that number two budding, budding entrepreneurs everyone in this one yes. okay emergent entrepreneurs any senior citizen no so we have this category of budding entrepreneurs that is from 20 to 25 and then you have these emergent entrepreneurs that is from 26 to 29 so how the entrepreneurial business uh, this process works number one what you have to do you need to have inception then you have startup and then you have your early years what we are doing in inception is number one you need to have the same I am you need to have that motivation that I can do it I can actually understand the market and I can solve that particular issue number two what you are looking is identification of the opportunity identification of an opportunity do we look for opportunity really which opportunities came to you <laughs> number one <laughs> Achha, you don't want to talk about it bad opportunities <laughs> okay you never thought about it opportunities don't walk towards you 
You have to search for it. We have to create our own opportunity. You have to create your own, and if you can't, and if you don't work, you always look for opportunities are always in front of you. Yes. It's the only the way you grab it. Someone, if there is one opportunity over here, who will grab it? I. Just two, three, infinite. <laughs> so opportunities have to be, they are there, but you need a lens to watch it, right? It's just that anyone can open a restaurant, but maybe your restaurant doesn't work, her restaurants work easily. Why? Hmm? New idea or the service? Remember when you go for in a food business, people don't pay for food, people pay for service. service. You go to a particular shop in pharmacy, why? In all your life, you go to a particular petrol pump, you go to a particular uh, pump, uh, this uh, uh, pharmacy shop, you go to a particular burger shop, pan shop, why? There are so many, because uh, the Panadol is the same, the jazz card is the same, but you have a very specific person from where whom you get it, why? The way they present it. He just values you, he smiles at you and he says, how are you ma'am? How is your mother doing now? Is the medicine working? And you feel important. You feel if he is, doesn't smile, you go to a hotel in Serena, and the guard looks in a very bitter, bad manner. Will you go to the hotel? No. It was just a guard. You went for the food. Why? Because he never made you feel important. We were giving, I was in one of the sales team training of Chai Khana. Everyone been there? Yes. Yes. What is the first thing that you feel there? Very, very welcoming. You feel? Important. important. Okay. Aslam Alaikum, how are you? <laughs> and you feel? He knows me. <laughs> right? You feel and you want to be known and you would see you take your friends. Now let's go to Chai Khan. You're looking for that particular waiter. He comes, hi ma'am, how are you? Long time. Because it's not for the tea. It's for the service that you are given. Right? So the, your food business is not working because you're not working on your smile. smile. Okay. So identification of the opportunity. Opportunities are always there. And yes, when we are talking about the tangible ones, but the intangible ones, it's more about the service. It's more about importance to people. Then in the startups, what we are doing, you have to do the business planning. Number two, you have to look out for the resources. Who will give you resource? BC. BC? <laughs> Venture capitalist. Venture capitalist. Venture capitalist is the second stage. Who will first fund your family? family? Some friends. Bank, friends. Bank, friends. Relatives. Relatives. Family, friends, friends. friends. and friends. fools. <laughs> one is family, one is friend, and one is fool. Family, why? Because you are the daughter. Friend, because you are the friend. And fool, because I don't know you. That's why I am actually interested in sponsoring your research. So these are the three F's that actually give you the resources in your startup and then you have to make the final decision shall I or shall I no. I am or am I. am I then the early years now you have entered the market now you have market you have entered and now you are doing the firm management and you call yourself as the CEO entrepreneurship <laughs> yes perfect business plan and like uh, that we are having market everything whatever checklist we have right Sir, we are discussing about only that advantages that we got hmm. like like Porsche like etc 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 Porsche <laughs> okay or like uh, sir, we are not discussing about disadvantages if we are not I prepared. told you that the biggest disadvantage is it is at the risk of your life years your friends might be on a job, they have their saving, but you are always going for the entrepreneurial ventures. Is it, like or like it is like gambling. But people who are entrepreneurs, as I said, yes, they take risk, but they take calculus. If you have done that checklist, you have understood the market, you have understood the problem, you have friends, you have a network, what is the possibility of failing? Very high or very low? Very low. 
<coughs> no, uh, uh, the expectation of failure. Low. Low, because you have done all the risk analysis. But if you haven't done that, and you have an excellent idea, but you don't have the money, then you start taking loans. It's not. Uh, there is a list that comes out in which that these are the ten most worst managers of the world who have actually failed the businesses. So it's not about that. I'm not drawing a very flowery picture that it's always going to be success. There is going to be failure. As I talked about Jeff Bezos, he failed five times when he started with the Amazon. Uh, do you think that Lums took off very easily? No, they had this. Angro Foods, when they started their food division, they also had problem. Morgan Pick, when they first came to Pakistan, they had a failure because people never uh, bought it. And do you know what was the failure line? It was uh, Morgan Pick. Everyone knows it's a it's a hotel. I'm talking about ice cream now. Okay, not the hotel. So that is Morgan Pick. So Morgan Pick ice cream comes and uh, the advertisement comes on the television and the advertisement says. People say, we are expensive, but we are very expensive. How do you feel about it, this message? No, we don't like no. it. Why? Why? They are criticizing you are poor. You can't afford me. <laughs> right? And people stopped buying it. A bigger mistake. A company like Morgan Pick failed. And then they changed their advertisement and now it's uh, uh, present. Adidas. Right? A good company which sells. Sneakers, joggers, sports. And uh, what they did was that when uh, Obama came into presidency, they actually, uh, I think it was Reebok. Uh, I have to uh, make sure. I think it's Reebok. It came into the company and they brought these sneakers. And these sneakers had shackles with them. So with the sneakers, they attached these shackles. Who is the president at this point of time? And uh, what he is? An Afro-American. Afro you don't say that. He's an Afro-American. And how Afros were brought to US? In? As slaves. As slaves. So when this shoe came in the market, will it take off? No. No. It was a huge criticism. And a big company, will they make such a stupid mistake? But it made. Right? And the project failed. And within few months, it was out of the market. So much R&D, research, market service, test marketing, and still the product failed. So therefore, it's, uh, the failure is always there. It is not a very good road. It's not that it's an easy road that one can easily become an entrepreneur. So that is the firm management. So by the end of the day, you are an CEO. CEO. But what is the new name for CEO now? What is what do we call CEOs now? TV? CIO. Now they are called chief inspiring officers. They are not chief executive officers because the job of the CEO is to inspire people so that people are owned, people own the organization. So what is the things for this? These are all the uh, development system, the networks very important number two culture and education system if you are in an education system whenever you come with an idea your professor says no no boring stop it and you go to a university where you come with an idea he says excellent let's work on it the culture changes your perception then the socio-economic conditions if it's an innovative culture if it's an innovative society then it will always go for it then there are personal aspects of an entrepreneur what we are looking into the personal aspects? I am. I am. You are an extrovert. You like to social network. You like to travel. You have good ideas. You like to market those ideas. Then you have the industrial structure and dynamism. Every economy has a different structure. Look at Pakistan economy. What kind of structure we have over here? Falling. Where it is falling? In the ditch. And where we can find that ditch? You don't know. Okay. Do let me know when you find the address. In Pakistan, there are three major sectors. One is agriculture, one is industry, one is? Service sector. The contribution of agriculture sector is? This was in 1993 when I was doing my FSE. 
<laughs> you, uh, you were in your which stage? <laughs> Conception stage. <laughs> now the point is that was 52% in 2019 it's only 18 percent one eight and in every textbook you have studied that Pakistan is an agriculture, agriculture. but how much it is contributing 18 percent service sector 52 percent now the remaining you can see 30 percent 30 to 31 percent that is industry sector so which sector we should invest in service. service sector that's where you see the telco sector that's where you see the software that's where you, you see the food industry banking insurance all service sector now it is growing so is it good that we should go to the agriculture sector now no no so you always look at that what kind of industrial structure and dynamism you have in the economy at the moment then you have to look at uh, these factor market conditions factor market conditions you have you need a very special geneticist who can actually um, commercialize that product is that person available in the market Some not really will you go for that venture now no because it will become very costly so what you have to see that what kind of factor market is available for you then last one what kind of regulation the regulation that you need to know as scientists when we are becoming entrepreneurs is what? Save our research? Patents. How to save your research. And if you know it, otherwise people will hijack it. Because what your job is, you have a good idea, you are presenting it in different areas and I might present my idea over here and the next day because she has the money, she has the resources, she will take it off. And why she can take it off easily? Because I do not have a patent on it otherwise I cannot sue it so you have to understand what kind of regulations you are going into it so can you factor, and market factor and market conditions is basically what I talked about that what kind of market conditions we have at the moment what is the inflation in Pakistan inflation 7.7 .7. Right? And do you know what was the inflation in the last government regimes? 1.2. Have you felt that inflation? That it was so cheaper? Was the fee reduced? Nothing of that sort happened. So it was basically two factors. One was oil prices got low in the international market. And number two, Saudi Arabia gave us a big package, which improved our balance of payment and inflation got 1.2. And this is the lowest since Pakistan was born in 1947. Today, inflation is 7.7 percent. So when the inflation is basically increase in the prices. So regarding the market structure, if it's the cost of production is high, inflation means that the prices are increasing. So if the cost of production is high, will you do the production here in Pakistan? No. Where will we go? To cheaper. Where? or China. China so all our production started moving towards China now that is the market condition uh, we move to Bangladesh so if you move your production to China it's your idea it's your capital but you are investing it in China who is getting benefit China, China because unemployment reduced over there economic growth happened over there yeah. Pakistan never got anything so these are the market conditions that we need to understand that what is the inflation what is the wage rate going over here if wages are higher over here then what will happen people will go to somewhere else where labor is cheaper and again which country China, China. China. so what has happened Pakistan earlier being an industrialized economy now become a service based so where the industry has gone China. to China no, we don't have the cheapest labor because you don't match the demand and supply, right? So uh, then the last one, uh, so the market conditions is basically what kind of markets we are talking about. So key factors that actually makes you or influence you as an entrepreneur, number one is your technical, technical knowledge. knowledge. Like if you are a scientist, you can't become a filmmaker, you will always become an entrepreneur in in science you will always be doing some innovation in the field of genetics or biosciences or whatever number two then it's your competency 
that is your technical knowledge the first one university then it's your work experience sometimes you work uh, and different projects you have taken internships in different organizations and from there you are getting all kind of work experience the third one is you should know how to work in teams, teams. when you are working in teams what thing you know <coughs> Okay. How to cooperate with each How to cooperate? How much patient you are? Because people will come with diverse backgrounds. And remember, can you choose your boss? No. 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 So, what should you be doing? You always have to make your way out. You always have to be diplomatic. It is the same thing when you are working in teams which is being made by your professor or which is being made by your choice because you are a geneticist the other people are good in business finance and you can't work without them you have to be diplomatic you have to be patient and you have to get your task done yeah. always remember when you're working in teams you have to think above the personal thing you can't say I don't want to sit with her she smells I don't like to see, I hate her the way she looks at me. I don't like this. These are the personal things. Why you are sitting with her? Because you want your work done. You want to have your work done. So that is the patience that I'm talking about. You have to think beyond all these biases. Because if you get stuck into it, you cannot work in teams. Because if you are thinking like this, do you think they are also thinking about you like this? Yes, they will be because if you don't share anything, they will not be sharing that. So you have to give up your personal ego in order to make the team successful. Your projects needs to have profiles. This is what I call as the EP. Have you heard their songs? EP. And EP stands for? But we are talking entrepreneurship. <laughs> it's elevator pitch. Okay? So elevator pitch is what elevator pitch is that you are have anyone been in an elevator yeah. better you are in a hurry okay are you have you seen an elevator how it works you get inside and then you press the button and then you you can't go down yes. <laughs> you go up or down okay so, in the elevator pitch, what we are talking about that you enter an elevator, you are in Centaurus and you are in a basement, okay, you parked your car and you meet someone whom you wanted to meet throughout your life. He is your lifetime uh, celebrity. Who would it be? Salman. <laughs> okay. Tariq Jameel. Okay. <laughs> Or let's stick on with Salman Khan. So, this guy is there and now you are going to the floor where the cinemas are and I think it's fifth or sixth floor. How much time do you have? A few seconds. Few seconds. And you want to talk to him. What will you say? I'll write there. <laughs> right? What is elevator pitch that you meet a venture capitalist and you have this time otherwise you can't see him you can't meet him now you have to express your idea in such a way that the guy says this is my wasting card let's meet now what would be that 30 seconds powerful speech right now that is called the elevator pitch if we were in a workshop I would have asked you to do it and it's very interesting maybe some other time when we interact so you can practice it at home. Do you smoke? Have you seen the smoke? Okay. <laughs> so take a matchbox, okay? Don't use the lighter. Take the matchbox and what you do is burn it. And now burn it and stand in front of the mirror and start talking about yourself because you have to introduce. What would that be? Hello, my name is this and the smoke is gone. And this is the power of your persuasion. It is the power of your conviction that this is that this is the elevator pitch time. That until the whole match is burnt, you should be communicating your idea in those 30 to 40 seconds in such a way that the guy says, let's meet. Okay, so that is your the mini project profile, and this is the power of your speech. Then you need to have your 
networks and in networks you will be meeting the like-minded people and you will be interacting with them you'll be telling them this is what I do and this is how I want to continue with my business then what is bootstrapping what is bootstrapping no idea getting ready to start when do why do you strap your boots to run. to run okay now you are at a stage that you are going to take off right this is basically when the plane is going to taxing and he is it's about to fly and then this way this is the whole factor by which you can become a successful entrepreneur okay the work experience is what are you doing in the summers okay why do you do that so that is your work experience okay I'll uh, keep it over here and let's see no she's not excited she's too bored <laughs> and uh, when we catch up and then I'll tell you that okay how the business plans and how you come up with the ideas and maybe some other upcoming lectures thank you so much